Every year it seems they're even better than last year. They're making big grounds towards what they're doing in the U.S. And I'm actually proud of all the promoters over here for promoting such a good series and uh, having such awesome rounds and bringing in all the fans and sponsors and teams. It's, uh, it's, really, it's a really a professionally run event. They're superb riders, you know, some of the world's best riders. Um, Supercross is generally my domain, it's where I like to think that my strengths are. That's why I want the tracks to be technical, that's why I want big woos, because it really elevates the game and separates the guys that can really ride Supercross and ones that struggle a little bit. Supercross is one of the world's most spectacular extreme sports, as man and machine are pushed to the limit in search of national glory. The Australian Supercross Championship is the sport's pinnacle down under, and many of the world's best have converged upon Jim Boomer in Queensland for the opening round in front of a sellout audience. On today's show, you'll see the biggest names in the sport chasing the Holy Grail. We profile the stars and take you behind the scenes with the nation's biggest teams. Our coverage proudly supported by Hills International College, Yamaha, the LED Lighting Group and A&E Group Civil and Mining. It is great to have your company wherever you might be watching around Australia and welcome to Fox Sports exclusive coverage, the opening round of the 2016 Australian Supercross Championship. Weather conditions here at Jim Boomba in Queensland are perfect. We've got many of the world's best riders in town to contest tonight's opening round and it's exclusive of course to Fox Sports. As you can see a huge crowd is pouring into this venue and the thing about Supercross is it certainly attracts a demographic from every conceivable genre and it is great to see so many youngsters here in the house tonight. One of the men responsible for organising the first two rounds of the championship is co-promoter Scott Bannon, who now joins me in pit lane. You've got to be happy with this. The weather gods have done the right thing. Massive crowd pouring in. Yeah, someone's looking after me upstairs for sure after Thursday, but we're wrapped, mate. It's, it's going to be a full house, which is always a good way to start the series. It's an exhausting undertaking for you and your co-promoter. The bump in is incredible with infrastructure, lights, grandstands, portable toilets, and so it goes on. Three years ago, it was an empty paddock, you know. So, but the lights of like the LED group with Chris Jonker helping me out, it's been incredible. Incredibly, mate, that's made it easy, but it's a lot of big days, mate. You can tell what the red face, I've put some arrows in, but it'll be all worth it tonight for sure. Let's talk about the actual track itself. It's based on uh, an American design. Yeah, it's a full-size US track. It's similar to the St. Louis race they had. We changed a couple of things from the last time we raced here, but it's important to have a full-size track for these guys to show what they can do. If you've got a small, tight track, they really can't unload, you know, and, and to full potential, so... It should be good racing tonight. You're also promoting the second round uh, at Toowoomba on yeah. October 14. Will the track be similar? Toowoomba's bigger. Toowoomba's the biggest track we've ever built in Australia, ever. So it'll be about a minute 20 a lap. It's got an 800 metre speedway turn in it. So I've got so much more room at Toowoomba. Toowoomba's going to be something you've never seen before. So. Thanks for joining us on our coverage and thanks for having us thanks here. Thanks anytime, Tabby. There he is, Scott Bannon, co-promoter of the first two rounds of the Australian Supercross Championship exclusive to Fox Sports. Also working with us tonight in commentary, Australia's former triple world speedway champion Jason Crump as we say good evening to him. Yes thanks very much Tappy that's right we're down here in the pits uh, where the atmosphere is fantastic and here's uh, Dean Ferris a factory Yamaha rider and 2016 Australian motocross champion must have been very proud of uh, that result Dean. Yeah definitely it's my first motocross championship and uh, it's one of many for CDR so stoked I could do it with the winning team and uh, couldn't be any happier with my season. 
We're here at uh, Jimboomba for round one of the Supercross series. You must be looking forward to uh, flexing your muscles in this. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I've got to be a bit smarter and not flex too much muscle out there because uh, Supercross are a little bit technical and catch you out. So um, motocross being my forte, I'm really uh, just trying to get my eye in and see how it goes. But my practice times were quite good and I surprised myself a little bit. So we'll see how the races go. Big thank you to former Triple World Speedway champion Jason Crump. So ahead of the first race tonight, a check of the championship calendar. Beyond the Jimboomba round this evening, we head to Toowoomba for round two, then to South Australia, the Royal Adelaide Showground, Avalon Raceway at Geelong in Victoria, and a two-night super show at Homebush to conclude the championship for 2016. I'm now joined in commentary by expert Cam Williams. And Cam, you've got the job from the outset of taking our viewers through this virtual racetrack. Yeah, thank you, Tabby. Fantastic to be here. I have to say that downhill start is the key to this. We don't see those too often because we get through this first rhythm lane here. The guys will push on towards the bar. Then we've got this drag and back or on off section here. You'll see them jump onto that. Then they'll jump onto this one here. It's a flat tabletop. Charge out of that little single out and then dive hard into this right hander. They'll sweep that through here. Then I would say they probably might just clip fourth gear uh, on the 450s and then a, there'll be a double line form up here to the inside to the outside. There's some good options here with this on-off section. They can triple and then line up for the finish line triple or they can work a different option there. So we get our whip on over the finish line and again, now this is going to be critical, these two sections here. Good long rhythm lane. You see these guys will have the opportunity here to double or triple through all this and then once they get through this rhythm lane, the key for this will be this last little triple out and then to set up for these whoops. Now these are a big gnarly set of whoops. The guys at Jim Boomer really do make them a decent size. Looking to make this as technical as they can. Last three roops here will be vital as they get into the sandbox to set yourself up for that. Little store wall single through the corner and that great big triple in front of the grandstand. Round out that last turn and that is a lap of this Jimboomba track. Well done Cam, great explanation and terrific graphics there too. On today's show we're featuring the likes of Dan Reardon and Jimmy Dakotas and also the KTM team. Here's Jason Crump with more. We're down here in the KTM racing truck with their team manager, Kyle Blunden, to talk us through the differences between the 450SX bike and the 250SX. Kyle, do you want to talk us through your uh, two race bikes, one of which, the 450 Kyle Peters, went quickest in practice and qualifying? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's great that Kyle was able to go P1 in qualifying. Um, great start to our day. But yeah, there's a, obviously quite a big difference between the 450 and the 250, mainly so being the, uh, the power output of the 450. Um, it's, it's a huge step from a 250 to a 450. In supercross racing, the suspension is critical, even more so than having a fast engine. Kyle, do you want to talk us through the suspension modifications made to these KTM race bikes? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, the 2017 KTM comes out with air fork. Um, we're using a factory fork um, from WP Suspension. Um, it's all tuned basically in-house. It's a 52 millimeter fork. Um, the shock is also a factory part that we're very fortunate that we, ha we have access to those parts. Um, and honestly, setting up suspension is, is really is a key part to being able to have the bike and the rider feel it's like they can, they can push to the limit, you know. Um, with the right suspension, the rider is able to go so much faster. With Kyle Peters stepping in for the injured Kirk Gibbs, the KTM team have had to make a significant change due to the height difference. These foot pegs here for Kyle Peters are, are a huge, huge foot peg. Yeah, they are, yeah. Um, basically, Kyle's quite a lot shorter than, than Kirk, and basically, he's a, he's a shorter guy. Um, so basically, we've had to shorten the bike ride up. Um, you know, he was able to get these foot pegs sent over from America, uh, which he's, he has used in the past. Um, and uh, we do shorten the bike as far as the seat height and everything like that too, just to suit him, you know. Um, we just try and make him as comfortable as possible. Right next to Kyle Peters' Factory 450 is Caleb Ward's Factory 250. Um, visually, the bikes look almost the same. Yeah, you know what, they are. Uh, um, from the outside looking in, they do look very similar. Obviously, Caleb has the black number plates, which signifies that he is running in the 250 class. Um, but you know, we, there is a quite a lot of modification that goes into Caleb's bike, um, being that it is uh, a lot less power than the 450. We do try and get the most from the engine and, and definitely uh, try and reduce the weight as much as we can. So the wheel size and gearing and, and stuff like that is very, very similar from the 450 to the 250? Yeah, it is, yeah. The actual, actual wheel sizes are identical. They run the same size rim, same size hubs, everything is pretty well, uh, like it is, it is it's, it's the same. 
Um, gearing wise, uh, it's very similar. Um, however, we do make changes between the 450 and 250 as far as to suit the individual rider themselves. Probably the biggest difference that I can notice on the two bikes is the different size of front, front header pipe. Uh, the 250 being a much longer header pipe. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're very fortunate that we have uh, a good connection with FMF in uh, in America, and they've been able to offer us basically, which is they they do sell this part now. It's a Supercross style header. Um, basically, what it's designed to do is give the bike a little bit more punch out of the turns and in between the transitions of all the the jumps and obstacles on a Supercross track. The KTM feature. Still to come, a feature on Yamaha and also the Honda team as well. It's good to have you with us. A packed Chimboomba Stadium. I would suggest crowd numbers around the 8,000 here in good weather conditions. And bikes now at the starting gates for the opening event, the SX2 with heat race number one. And Cam Williams beside me again. Take us through some of the big chances here. Obviously, Gavin Faith, the fastest qualifier overall. He sits in this one alongside Wade Hunter, a, a far north Queensland supercross specialist. Mitch Evans, another one of the Queensland products from up there as well. Expect these guys to feature. Now, this is the gnarly section of the track. This start, generally you'll get on the gas and you'll stay on the gas to this. What they have to do is get off the gate, clear the gate, and then get back on the gas and get down there. So it's quite a technical start. And we're going to see the first one for the night here, David. Here we go. SX2, heat race number one in front of a monster crowd. Underway, pretty good even start. The flames erupt above the starting gates, a great visual. And we take the drone footage, which adequately demonstrates the action as they settle down during the early stages of this race. And the leader is Joshua Kashia. Yeah, Josh Case has got out to a fantastic start over his teammate, Gavin Faith. Been quite a, a, an abbreviation between races for little Joshua Kasia. He's ridden a lot of years with Reeve Konski's team. It's good to see him back here in racing. Definitely one of those guys that won't leave you wondering when he goes out on the track. Good move to the inside there as well. Looked like Duran Stapleton got the move done there on Q and Hall up the inside. Now look for Gavin Faith to try and line up Josh Kasia here. He's around about a second quicker than Kasia would qualify. So I would say that he's probably going to be carrying significantly more track and lap speed. Here we go. Watch Gavin Faith. These American loves these whoops. And he's made up about a bike length or so in there as we get through that little sand section which looks like added some rhythm jumps into that one so that's going to get really gnarly and rutted out towards the back end of the night so lap two of seven and Keisha under seeds from Gavin Faith the American who does look to be carrying a little more speed you can say that again he's taken the race lead relegates Joshua Keisha back to second on the racetrack it'll be interesting to see what the rider of bike 10 can do about that whether He'll stay cool, calm and collected and let nature take its course or push too hard. He's a steamy little character, Josh Kasia. Very, very steamy little guy. He rides with a lot of passion and he gets around with a lot of passion. If anyone's spent any time with this little man, they know that he is an angry guy when it comes to it. He pulls the helmet on. You can see him get to the inside there of Job, Gavin Faith, I should say, and try and make something stick. Teammate or no, and there's Kasia again. And he's made that move on Gavin Faith. He's not afraid to elbow up Josh Kasia. So if he needs to do a bit of rubbing as racing arrangement than Josh Kasia, he is the man that will get that done. And there's that stall rule right before the finish line. Now that's going to be a key component towards the back end of this race. Anyone trying to make up some time. Now Faith to the inside. Very, very polite pass there. He could pretty much have put Josh Kasia into the cheap seats if he so desired. But our teammates don't do that to each other, Dave. Uh, this is fantastic action at Jim Boomba. Great way to get the championship underway tonight in Queensland and terrific with Gavin Faith and Joshua Kasia up front have a look at this on the replay see Faith but just a little bit loose through that last one on that loop and he's going to drop there Faith just managed to keep himself a little bit of a lower trajectory and set up Kasia quite nicely Kasia smart enough to get out of the way and let Faith through there so good move there Locked in third place at the moment is Duran Stapleton, a young privateer from Victoria as Faith gets the last lap board. Very, very strong right now. One yep. rode very well last year in the opening class, the SX1 class, now back to the SX2. Yet again for your Reeve constantly on this Honda team. Highlights continuing of this race and Gavin Faith heading toward the chequered flag. It's been a heady ride. Pacia was able to steal the advantage early, but Faith the ground away didn't he and made the passes when they counted so on the final lap the american in front of this adoring crowd it's good to have you with us on australia's sports leader fox sports looking very good at the moment 
Gavin Faith just a little bit of mistiming there. So I'm wondering if there's something going on with his machine or just missing some timing and just clipping the field of top jumps. To me, be right. Just a little bit tight at this point in time, Gavin Faith. Not much more to question. No, no, he's going to get the win, Gavin Faith. Great ride. Yeah, there's the checkered flag. Pacia in second. Stapleton in third. We'll recap the results for you. An excellent ride by Gavin Faith. There's the 14 by two of Stapleton, right hand side of screen. And on the screen now, the race results. And Faith in a race time of 5 minutes 49.522. Defeated Pacia in the end by a fraction more than two seconds. And the remainder you can see. So the circuit held up well, not a hint of dust. Looking good out there as we check the replay out of the start. Looking very, very good. Interesting to see Bailey Cox in there. Watch him get stood up and go. have to go the long way around. Good start from the 144 of Kieran Hall. Got a little bit squeezed. Looks to me like these inside gates. You can see Keisha there all over the back wheel. Maybe about the sixth or seventh gate along. Look like it may well be the pick as we get a little bit further into the night. Traction changes and these things run up on, on they, as they go down. The idea here as well, obviously, is not to get as much wheel lift out of that gate. You'll see these guys trying to get that front wheel down and drive the back wheel in and then get the power down good and cleanly. So here's this pass, Gavin Faith, mate. He's a little bit loose through there and you can see the body language. He's shifting and changing to get it just on point, which he does there. And this is the pass here that Gavin Faith made for the lead. He really wasn't headed after this one. Yeah, it proved to be unassailable, Cam. And some super slow-mo action of the eventual race winner. The American Gavin Faith, check it out. Big screen in the background. The promoters of this event, SB Promotions, applying all the bells and whistles to the opening round of the championship, as they will again at Toowoomba on October number 14. Pacia in second spot, and over the start-finish line they go. Now let's head down to Jason Crump. Gavin Faith, a tough way to start the series off. A terrific battle with your teammate. Yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty tough track. It's a lot different from practice, so uh, yeah, I was making a few mistakes out there. But you know, towards the end of it, I felt good. I kind of got a flow going, and uh, really looking forward to the main event. Your, your teammate pushed you really hard there. In fact, you actually had to overtake him, and he came back at you pretty strong. Yeah, no, uh, my teammate Josh is riding really well, and uh, the whole Ben Wright Hot team is, uh, you know, has got their stuff together right now, so. It should be an awesome night, and uh, hopefully we can end up on the podium. Well done, good job. Yes, indeed, well done to Heat Race winner number one in the SX2 class. In front of this monster crowd of Jim Boomba, we now advance to SX2, Heat Race number two. And it's a star-studded cast of the fast, the likes of Dakotas, Richardson and Melross, to name but three. Riders worth watching here. Interesting to note, Jimmy Dakota's Jackson Richardson and Hayden Melros all spending a lot of time in the US. Those obviously Jimmy's American, but Hayden and Jackson both live over there pretty much and race over there full time. When we here last year, Privateer Lewis Woods got his one and only win, and it's great to have him in this heat as well. So keep your eye on the number 15 as we're just about to get set to get the gate dropped. Underway now, race number two, of course, Dakota's here, the American, the defending SX2 champion having won the supercross title last year in australia you can see not a bad start here from uh, kale makeham on bike number nine number nine rather giving a bit of cheek early on yeah he's no stranger to supercross kale makeham won an under 19 australian supercross championship a few years back now but now you can see the cream start to rise can't you hayden meros has got himself in the front then jimmy dakota's and obviously jackson richardson another one of those cans products at the moment the likes of todd waters and and the Evans brothers coming out of Cairns at the moment. Of course, Wade Hunter, another one of those guys from the far north. So they really do produce some exceptional motorcycle races out of the far north of Queensland. But right now, this is a bit of a battle here. We need to see if we can get Jackson Richardson past Jimmy Dakotas to see if he's actually going to have anything at this point in time for Melros because Melros has already pulled about a two-second lead on Jimmy Dakotas and he's looking very, very strong. Kyle Webster doing a terrific job on bike 96. We go on board with Jackson Richardson. That's Webster to his right, as that onboard shot shows. They're having a tremendous battle, and that onboard gives you an insight into the physical nature of this sport. Incredibly physical, this sport. Essentially, you're in the red zone for pretty much the moment the gate drops until you get back on. So a lot of these times, you might see an athlete who's going to be in the red zone or at their VO2 max, and maybe two or three or five minutes. These guys will do 15 or 16 minutes in the red zone. So 
they need to do a lot of training to stay exceptionally fit so that obviously the body gets tired, but you need to make sure that the brain doesn't get tired. Oh, oh. Kyle Webster! Oh. Got that wrong. Didn't he want? He got a very, very big moment there, Kyle Webster. He has done exceptionally well to hang on to that. He's done well, though. He hasn't shed a lot of time there, Jackson Richardson. He did the right thing. He made a mistake, and he obviously instantly regressed that. So if he had to stay on the gas and snuck through there and stayed in front of Richardson, oh. he would have been going, oh, Jimmy Dakotas. That's not promising for the number one at all. The American down, dusted, busted, and disgusted, but back up on two wheels and continues on. Meanwhile, Mel Ross, a barnstorming race leader at the present time. Jackson Richardson, though, is cam coming out after him, and ironically, Kyle Webster, after having a massive moment, still finds himself in third spot, and we ride on board with him now. Yeah, he dodged a bullet there, Kyle Webster, but that's a beauty for these kids that, that race at this level. They'll dodge a bullet in it. They won't stay in their head, they'll just move on as we catch the top 10 update there. Mel Ross and Richardson Webster wills to close back in fifth now. So he's got a bit of work to do. Interesting though here as well. On the DPH squad here, hey Mel Ross, he races Yamaha in America, so he won't have a lot of change over time. Remember I'm walking with now right now, Jackson Richardson he races a Honda in America. Here he is putting a pass on Mel Ross, well it's a yellow flag pass, so he's had to redress that straight away. He's done a good job to redress that, Jackson Richardson. So, I think that label of the Cooper Posniak down on the ground, and that's unfortunate. First year in the seniors for Cooper Posniak, so he's learning a few tough lessons at the moment. As I was saying with Richardson, he's just got a little bit more testing time in order to get used to a Yamaha. His entire career he's been on Honda, so I think there may not be a lot of difference. These guys know there is a significant amount of difference. Based on your expert opinion, the major difference between the two mates? I'd say it's probably going to be a power at this point in time, and the actual bike setup as we see Jimmy Dakotas has crashed there. Simple things like where your handlebars go, your foot pegs are, the difference in power and the power delivery on the machine could well be very, very different. And these guys, you know, they might get off one with, with an aggressive power delivery and that lights up and it's going to have a little bit of a smooth power delivery. In terms of the cockpit, it can be shorter between the bars and the seat. Some people like it longer, you know, or, or in Jackson Richardson's terms, it's not at all right. Oh! There is sheep stations on at the back here as power making has gone down. And potentially he's, uh, he's had a clash there. Maybe Webster was, I think. Now Jimmy Coe is fighting his way back there through Dylan Wills. There's all sorts of sideways out of those whoops. Now he's dodged the ball there, Dylan Wills. So we've now got Macon, Posniak and Abella. Three riders taking no further part in this event. Heat two for the SX2 class. And things are getting fairly interesting out there, as you can see. Jimmy Dakotas up on the inside of Dylan Wills. We ride on board with the ladder. And that's Dakotas, the American, ahead of him, who hasn't had a smooth run himself in this race. Have a tough off at the night of the office so far, Jimmy Coates. Probably a little bit of a lack of race. He didn't do a lot of outdoors this year, Jimmy Coates. So, probably a little bit of race rust going on at the moment. But I would expect that we're going to see significantly better for the New York native as we go along. Dylan Wills here, though. Second year in the senior class there at Newcastle. A lot of work with Matt Moss in Newcastle there. And he'll be learning a lot of lessons. So, now we pick up our race leader. Just about to get the job done here. Hayden Meros. Folks at DPH Motors will be very, very happy with their charge so far. Indeed, so Mel Ross not far to go, circulating on the final lap at Jim Boomba Stadium. It's a lockout crowd here. Not an empty seat anywhere. And they're loving what they're seeing thus far. This has been quality by Mel Ross and certainly showing his rivals the way home. Richardson in second as they greet the chequered flag and fly into the night sky. We'll recap the placings for you. But Mel Ross getting the job done in five minutes, 53.924 seconds. And the gap to his nearest rival in second place, just a fraction more than one second in the end. But good job by the rider of machine 45, Mel Ross. There it is, 1.1 seconds separating first and second. Richardson on the Serco Yamaha home in second, then the Honda of Kyle Webster and the KTM of Dylan Wills officially placed in fourth position as Cam Williams takes you through the race recap. Good jump there. It looks like, again, that inside, that middle to the inside is where it's really working. Where we can see Mel Ross get out there and look like Mank have got a half-decent start along with Richardson. So that section, that portion of the gate seems to be where they're getting the best drive and they've got the straightest line in the first turn. So we saw this one a little bit earlier. Kyle Webster did a good job and as Jimmy Dakotas went to go to the inside, he just kind of came a little bit unstuck, made a little bit too much front brake and he's tucked it. But he's done a good job to pick it up there. 
And now this one for Dakotas. Again, all sorts of sideways, and his timing is just out there. You can see he's hit the top of that as opposed to clearing it. I'd say he'd already made the pass. Oh, there's another big one. I think that might be the pause now. Is it? I'd no, say that's so. That's Kale Maker. I should oh, yeah. regress. That looks to me like it may well be Kale Maker that's gone down. There's that regress by Jackson Richardson. Very, very smart, and he failed to take care of that. Make sure we didn't cop a 10 or 15 second penalty for passing on the yellow. Now Louis Woods it is. It's come to the inside. Put an excuse me please in there. Wow. Okay, well done. Let's head down to former Triple World Speedway champion Jason Crump, who's with the winner. Aiden Melrose, that experience of racing in America sure looked like it paid off there. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to get back here in Oz and uh, race on some home soil. You know, I haven't been here for, a, for just over two years. So it feels great to be racing in front of uh, friends and family. And, um, yeah, what a spectacular event they put on tonight. Must be looking forward to the main event now after a ride like that. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, my DBH Motorsports bike has got off to a, a killer start. So one more of them in the main event, man, and uh, we'll be set. We'll run uh, with 15 laps strong and bring it home. Well done. Good job. On Fox Sports, you're watching the opening round of the Australian Supercross Championship from Jim Boomer in Queensland. Our coverage supported by Hills International College, Yamaha, the LED Lighting Group and A&E Group Civil and Mining. Welcome back to Hills College here in Jim Boomba. We now present you folks on Fox Sports, a feature story on CDR Yamaha. After announcing his retirement in 2012, Dan Reardon had second thoughts and declared he was on the comeback trail with the Craig Dack Racing Yamaha factory team in 2015. And what a comeback it was. The former national motocross and supercross champion stormed a victory in last season's national SX1 series. Yeah, it was awesome, you know, uh, coming out of retirement and for the guys that have retired before and, and come back to doing something professional again, it always is a hard task. Winning championships prior, you know, years ago, you, you understand that feeling and you want that again. Um, I knew it was going to be a hard task to do, but we uh, we managed to get the job done. So, end result was really, really, really good. Um, going into this year, uh, things are just better, they're stronger. I understand the bike. Uh, obviously, spent more time with the team. Um, all those things are important to a championship. Team boss Craig Dack, himself a legend of the sport, was quick to re-sign the Queenslander for 2016 and both men were brimming with confidence. But then, two months before tonight's opening round, Reardon suffered a serious knee injury. Yeah, so only uh, it was nine weeks ago now that I suffered an ACL rupture um, and I was in that uh, predicament on whether to get fixed or not. Um, I actually opted for an allograft, which is a donor ligament, something that a lot of people haven't really heard of or it's not very common, but for me, based on my age, where I am on my career, and obviously this Supercross season, it was very important for me to, to get back on track as soon as possible. So I've been back on the bike for four weeks. Um, it's not ideal preparation, you know. We, it's a lot of hard work to do what we do, uh, but I've done everything I possibly can to get ready for this round. And, and so far, it's been really good. So I'm excited at least to be back on the bike defending this title. Fitness is time, you know. So uh, for me, I've been working extremely hard to, that's all I've been focused on actually is my fitness. I haven't worked on my speed, I haven't worked on any technique. It's all about just being fit. And so given the time frame, I think we've done an awesome job to get to where we are. Uh, we have four week break after this round, so that will allow me to, to really work hard and be ready for round two. Heading into the opening round of the championship at Jim Boomba, the defending champion says he's happy with his pace. The track is, is a little bit slow, um, but that's what the tracks are like around here. Um, I kind of beg the promoters to make them really technical and things like that so that separates a lot of people. But all in all, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. You know, the practice went well, qualifying went well. I have really good speed in some sections. I just need to tidy up a few others and uh, we'll be on track. The elevated start is something you don't really see very often in our sport. Um, for me, if you watch the riders, the way you make and break that start, obviously reaction time is one, but the transition between the flat and then going down is, uh, is a really important part of actually getting that whole shot. Feature story there on the CDR Factory Yamaha team and of course Daniel Reardon and we will see Daniel in action in the next event on today's program as we present highlights of Heat 1 in SX1, the Jim Boomba Stadium. What about the crowd here tonight? Tremendous atmosphere and the knobby underwear hole shot. Who will it be this time as you look at the starters in this race to be contested over eight laps? 
And certainly Reardon is among the riders to beat here. The likes of Waters and Bopping. They'll give a bit of cheek as well. The gates drop and we're underway here at Jim Boomer. The third event on today's program. And well, who is it that's got the knobby underwear hole shot by one Daniel Reardon? Gonna be Daniel Reardon. He snuck around the outside there and forced Cade Mosing wide. The American here, Kyle Peters as well. He's on his third different manufacturer in about as many weeks, Kyle Peters. So he's gonna have troubles coming to terms with this machine that he's on. Good pass up the inside there. Quite sure who that was that got the job done. It was bopping, I think, actually might have got up the inside of Mosing there. So that's a good one for the DPH number 70 there now. Locked and wide of the third. Daniel Reardon having a look at the back here. Of Kyle Peters, obviously he was drafted in after unfortunately Kurt Gibbs broke his femur getting ready for the motocross of the nation. So they brought Kyle Peters in. Very, very experienced American, I should say, and he spent some time here in the past. So obviously broke the last two rounds for Troy Carroll and the Kawasaki and then the guys at KTM thought he'd be a good guy to bring back and he cases that one. He gets a good dose of commentators curse for his trouble. <laughs> Dan Reardon switches back. Get under that knobby underwear sign again. You see Reardon now just takes the line away from Peters. Looking to clear Kyle Peters here in a decent fashion and just get out of the way there. As I said, Peters still getting accustomed to this machine, so he just looks like he's got a little bit of rust on that one. As we watch the race leader, Daniel Reardon, clearing off into the distance. By way of clarification, the starting positions graphic at the start of the race had Kyle Peters on bike 23. But as you saw during the action, as described by Cam Williams, he's riding... 110 on the number plate. So not sure why that is the case. It doesn't matter as the action continues here. Bike 70 in third position. Lawson bopping. And he now starts to apply some pressure to Kyle Peters. Todd Waters gets to the inside of Lawson bopping there and sweeps that line away. Now, here's a name we haven't heard a lot of in Supercross terms. Been racing in Europe for the last two years. Todd Waters come back to race some Supercross. Now, a few years back when he did get the opportunity to race Supercross, was very very fast so this track not super technical so someone with Todd Waters riding abilities we go on board right now with Todd Waters as he starts to put the squeeze on Kyle Peters. Oh great onboard shot there as he rushed up to the back wheel of Peters on bike 110 and terrific action here at Jim Boomba so red and the leader Peters is second and he's under siege from Waters here they come, Peters right hand side of pitcher and Waters oh. makes a challenge and Peters down he goes yeah, on he the got, KTM. He got all sorts of sideways through there and he cut across on Waters line just a little bit. It looks to me Todd Waters like he's almost overriding this bike at the moment, running high on a few berms and missing his timing but still riding reasonably fast. His lap times are pretty good. You can see there Waters goes left and Peters goes right. So I'd say it's just a racing incident where both of these guys have shifted off their line through those whoops. And unfortunately for Peters, he's paid the price. Yeah, that, the head-on shot shows it really well, doesn't it? Just a racing incident. There was no malice in it. It was simply fighting for position and it went wrong. So that moves Lawson Bopping up to third in the race on bike 70. There he is now over the start-finish line jump. And immediately behind him is Cade Mozig. So that's the top four at this juncture of the race. Mozig switches to the inside and relegates Bopping a spot. Yeah, he takes the line away. Watch the Bopping here. He might stay on, on the inside here and try and carry this line to get back up the inside through this store wall here. A good move there from Lawson Bopping. Now Mozig switches back and that's going to put him on the inside for this next line here. But looks like Bopping's tripled through there and he's opened up that gap where Mosley's missed his timing a little bit, and that's allowed Bopping just a little bit more breathing room at this point in time on that DPH motorsport machine. So action continues, not far to go. They'll see the last lap to go board next time they leap over the start-finish line. So it's Reed and Waters bopping Mosick, and Jay Wilson is rounding out the top five at this late stage of the race. Heat one for SX1. Doing a good job there, Jay Wilson. First year in the 450 or SX1 class, so He's learning a lot of lessons at the moment, young Jay, former world 85cc champion and last year's SX2 outdoor champion, so very, very good. But right now, it's all about the number one, Daniel Reardon, as you heard him say earlier. Only got four weeks bike prep on this one, and what we do know about Supercross is that we really do need to be supremely fit, which Daniel Reardon is. Bike time is what he's just struggling with a little bit. We've got a four-week break after this, so David, I would expect that Daniel Reardon will come out swinging for round two. Absolutely. 
And it's not the sport you want to be participating in if you've got a troublesome knee, a serious knee injury, which of course he endured not long ago. And there's the chequered flag and Daniel Reardon emerging victorious in the opening heat of SX1 here tonight at Jim Boomba. Yeah, no shortage of physicality. So a recap of the placings, Reardon, Waters, Bopping, Mozik, Wilson, Wright, Peters Crawford, Sorowski, and Kruzik rounding out the top 10 in SX1. Heat race number one. Heat race number two will be next up on the program. Here's a race recap though with Pam Williams. Yeah, decent start there on the outside for Sorowski, but a tough one for John Kruzik. On the inside though, was it a good start for Daniel Reed? And watch what he does here, he squares it off cuts back and controls the inside line and water squeezes across and then squeezes Cade Mosey. There's the pass for the league, Daniel Reed just blew by Kyle Peters on that 110. As I said, Peters lacking a, a great deal of bike time on that. He rode the last two rounds of the outdoors for Kawasaki. Now we see him on a completely different manufacturer. So he's got a little bit of homework to do. That happens when you replace someone. And there's this pass, this incident between Waters and Peters and Todd Waters is a big human being. So you're going to get tangled up with him. You're probably going to come off on the short end of the stick, I'd say. Yep, as we saw there, Peters biting the dirt. Fortunately for him, he emerged unscathed. Let's go to Jason Crump. Yeah, it was good. It's sort of what we wanted to do. Get a nice little good start and uh, I wasn't too anxious, wasn't uh, trying to rush things too much. It's a little slippery out there, so just taking our time, making sure we hit our lines and uh, get ready for that main event. Track a lot different than in practice this afternoon? Uh, a little bit, yeah. The, the water and now that the sun's not out, uh, the track will actually get fairly hard and really slippery, so throttle control, not braking too hard. Um, yeah, letting the race sort of come to me is probably going to be the plan, so. Well done, great start to your defence. Yeah, perfect start for Daniel Reardon, uh, chatting to Jason Crump in the aftermath of his heat race victory. Wonderful shot, massive crowd in. It is heat two next up for SX1, here's Jason. Justin Brayton, just about ready for your first race in Australia. Yeah, man, I'm excited to be here. I was here in 2010 and I've been wanting to come back ever since. And thankful I've got the opportunity with Honda over here and, and uh, looking forward to to battle with some good guys tonight. The, um, the track itself looks pretty good. Yeah, everything feels good. The track's awesome, my bike's really good. And a lot of competition though, so it's gonna be hard, and, and, uh, but I'm ready to fight. Good luck, buddy. Okay, advancing now to SX1, heat race number two, and the starting graphic, and a number of Americans involved here, Cam. Yeah, some names that those who are well-versed in the AMA would be well aware of, Justin Brayton and Will Hahn. Will Hahn making his comeback to racing after pretty much two seasons off after probably being one of the most unluckiest guys to climb behind the gate. Here we see the start in this one. It looks to me like it's been a really good one for Justin Brayton and Dean Ferris to the inside. Luke Wilson is going to run it a bit wide and he's going to pay the price for that on the 15. But Dean Ferris it was that got the knobby hole shot looking very, very strong early. Yeah, on bike triple one, but he is under siege from Justin Brayton who draws almost level with him. They go through the right hander, a fist full of throttle from Dean Ferris sees him open up the gap just slightly in advance of Justin Brayton and a couple of other riders coming through quickly now including the legendary Jay Marmont on bike number two. He lies in third position and needs no introduction in this sport anywhere. No, he's a legend of the sport. There is Will Hahn there on the number 66 MPE Kawasaki machine looking to get to the inside of Marmont there. He's being very, very polite to Jay Marmont. Say he wants to ride at his practice track during the week or something because no. he really could have run it in wooden deep there on Jay Marmont, but opted not to. It is only a heat race and his first essentially race back in the better part of 18 months. So Will Harm will be looking just to get his, his boots a bit dirty and get himself ready to race. And this guy, Justin Brayton, looks in true reach at the moment. A lot of work with Honda, a former factory Honda rider in the US, now riding on KTM with Butler Brothers and Nets in the US. And he does look very, very comfortable on this machine reasonably quickly. Triple one of Dean Ferris, he is locked and loaded in second place. And I have to say, for, uh, for a guy who's just won a motocross championship, he's looking very strong. He's doing an excellent job. So, too, is uh, Marmot. We saw a shot of him on bike number two. And now we look back at Luke Wilson. And also in the mix is Will Hahn, the other American. It's great to see these stars and stripes of the USA represented with a number of riders here tonight in action at Jim Boomba. You're watching the opening round of the Australian Supercross Championship for 2016, the Jim Boomba Stadium in Queensland. The opening round of six, and of course the second round 
at the Toowoomba Showground on October 14. Don't miss that one. Looking forward to that one. That is going to be epic. The guys from Tonka Works and Scotty Bannon and Paul, those guys are they are, they're throwing out all the stops on that track. That's going to be amazing. So we see Will Hahn now get the pass done on Jay Marmont riding in Husqvarna. Looking good as always, Jay Marmont. Will Hahn, though, he's obviously looking to reignite his career after two years of with injury. Replay here at the pass by break. He just gets in deeper. Does a better job, triples into the corner, takes the line away from Dean Ferris. A good, clean, super cross pass. There, here's Will Hahn. Again, he just goes to the inside, protects his line on Marmont. Marmont seems to come and switches back early, but. Will Harm with better drive out of the corner and makes that pass stick. They had a good battle. The two and the 66. Top 10 race update for you. Sees Brayton leading the American, then Ferris Hahn, Marmot Dobson, Wilson, and Dick Knapp, Hocking, Newton, and Bresson. Not far to go in this one. The second heat for SX1 here tonight. Brayton rounds up that stall wall again. Right back to first gear. Most of the time, these guys. Probably just shooting around in second gear. Maybe some of the guys will roll that in second. You see now Brayton just looking to get his timing bang on point. I believe he's headed back to the US after this time. I'll do some work with Honda in America, which is for me is amazing. He's going to get some help from Honda in America and then come back here with a win, a sale for the win, I should say, to try and win this championship. And that sort of dedication to the course, you know, good on Justin Brayton for doing that. It's great to have a rider of his caliber here for the entire series. Last lap now in heat race number two of course 2016 in this national championship it represents the 38th year that the australian supercross championship has been staged down under albeit in different formats over the years a six round series in 2016 culminating with the two night double header in sydney so race leader is justin brayton on his way to the checkered flag another very professional performance. He was blown away at the start by Dean Ferris and just stayed with him, taking the unnecessary risks. Picked off the race leader at the appropriate time and has ridden away to score an effortless victory in heat race number two. Well done to Justin Brayton and the Honda. Really quite dominant in that race. Yeah, looking very, very strong at the moment, Justin Brayton. I think he's the man who's going to take it to, to Dan Reid. I really do like to look at the way Dean Ferris rode that heat. A lot of people saying Ferris is a motocross only guy, but they're also forgetting the fact that Dean Ferris did a year with the great Roger the Costa, so he's going to have a super cross game on point. There's the officials there, Justin Brayton gets it from Ferris. Hahn rounds out third, Marmont, Wilson rounding out five. I would think Ferris would be delighted with that, so would team boss Craig Dack at the helm of the CDR Yamaha factory racing team. Here's a replay of the start. Ferris used that inside line. He on the very inside gate. He got a good jump there, Dean Ferris. And controlling this inside seems to me to be the way to go. You control that inside and he got a good bike length or two hole shot to pick up some great slow-mos. Those guys getting out of that first turn and getting him moving to saw Luke Wilson was on the Wilson fuel air machine. That pass made by Justin Bray, a very polite pass. Ferris saw it coming. And then Justin Bray was never had it. He got away with the win in that one. Okay, at this juncture, let's head down to Jason Crump. Well, Dean Ferris didn't let you have it all your own way, but once you got past him, you were able to put a put a consistent run of laps together, and uh, you look quite comfortable. Yeah, I feel good. The track is um, it's really challenging tonight, so definitely keeps us on our toes. Um, but yeah, I felt good. Uh, get the pre-race jitters out of the way, first race of the year. It's always a little nerve-wracking, but um, yeah, I felt good. Had a good start, and uh, got to the lead real quick, and, and uh, started to put in some solid laps. Happy with the way the track's performing? Yeah, for sure. It's really slick, but uh, you know, to be expected um, with the way the dirt is and uh, and at night the moisture kind of comes through. But it's going to be a good racetrack, going to be really tough. But um, I'm up for the challenge and hopefully get a good start and be talking to you guys again after the main. Thank you. Well done. On Fox Sports, you're watching the opening round of the Australian Supercross Championship from Jim Boomer in Queensland. Our coverage supported by Hills International College, Yamaha, the LED Lighting Group, and a and &E Group Civil and Mining.
sport of supercross in super slow motion. What a wonderful spectacle it is. Welcome back to Jim Boomer Stadium in Queensland. Let's head to Jason Trump, who's with a very special guest. Glenn Bell, a name from the past. You're actually going into the Australian Supercross Hall of Fame tonight. It must be a bit of an honour. It is. It's great to be honoured, like, this long after I've um, finished racing. You know, it's probably 30 years so I haven't raced professionally, so it's great to be honoured, yeah. But everybody remembers the old guys. You know, I've been there myself you, when you get to be one of the old guys. It, it really is nice to be remembered and, and for the new generation to recognise the guys that have gone before them. Oh, for sure, you know, there's, you always uh, look to the up-and-coming riders, as you know, of your era. And, um, you know, it's great to be past that. And, you know, I've been coaching a lot of, lot of young kids coming up. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a fantastic sport. You know, once you're involved in motocross, you never look back and you, it's in your blood. And, uh, you know, it's been a passion of mine ever since I was a little boy. Well done on a great career and enjoy your riding and good work with the young fellas. Yeah, blast from the past, all right, Glenn Bell. Very good rider in his day for a long period, had great longevity in the sport. So we now prepare for action with the Junior Lights camp. Yeah, very, very exciting. This is the, the future of Supercross right here. Kids like Joel, Jai Roberts, I should say, Riley Jukes, the Sigliano twins, Mason Rowe from around here, Tyler Darby. All these kids are very, very well, well versed, I should say, along with Caleb Dulay. These guys are they're the future of Supercross, and it's great to see these guys actually getting an opportunity on these tracks to race at the Australian Supercross Championships. All right, so we prepare for, for battle. It's a seven-lap journey. The Junior Lights will tell you about these bikes in just a moment. Closest to camera, it's Reese Crutch on 82 away. Who will it be that has the knobby underwear? Whole shot as they all approach the first left-hander safely. No dramas. I must say I had my heart in my mouth there. There was a bit of handlebar banging going on. Yeah, some of these young guys get a little bit over anxious before the start of their races, but they've done a good job in Riley Jukes. He's been around quite a while, Riley Jukes, so he won't be too panicked on this one. He's got to get the job done here past Marner. And you can see already looking to open up a decent-sized gap over this field. Jai Dixon is the rider in second spot aboard bike 292. Now, for any youngsters watching our coverage on Fox Sports, take us through the specs of these bikes, the Junior Lights. Essentially, what we're looking at here is a, uh, is a 125cc machine. Two-stroke machines throughout a majority of this this equipment. So this is the the gauge when the guys, when the young guys or, and girls change wheel size. They go from a standard small little 85 up to a 125 or 150 cc machine, or even some of them might be running a 250. So it's essentially the start of their big bike career when they move to this. You said that this is the nursery for future SX1 stars, and a comfortable lead now being enjoyed by Riley Juice. We saw a shot. A moment ago of some carnage, a couple of bikes down. One of them, Samuel Barris, I can report that the riders are OK. And the action here continuing at Jim Boom. But good to see the kids on television too. Yeah, it's great to have these guys and, and get them to showcase this, showcase their sponsors. And we get to see what they've got to offer. And a lot of these young guys, it's the first time they've been riding in front of a crowd. And they'll, they'll, as you can see, they're starting to struggle with the boobs. So handling the nerves and handling that and then Obviously handling bad sometimes can be a bit of a handful as well as a lot of these big triples and this sort of thing. So we've got another rider going down there, looks like a Husqvarna. Um, so this is a great experience for these guys. A lot of them, you know, they'll take so much away from it. It's, it's always good to get the young up-and-comers, the next Chad Reed, Michael Byrne, Dan Ridd. They're all coming out of these fields, you know, and when they get the opportunity to race here, we really do see what they've got to offer. And we give them the experience to push on in their careers. So Gill runs in third on bike 258 chasing Dukes and Dixon. The Sigliano brothers are competitive on bikes 285 and 286 respectively. They're running in the top half dozen at this juncture of the race as we check out a replay of the start. Good jump there as well by Riley Jukes and he controlled it from the outside which we've sort of seen hasn't worked out so well but he's done a good job there Riley Jukes. We've got a rider just tipped it over in the background there as well and Riley Jukes looks to get to the front nice and early on that Husky and make it stick. So here's Dukes, top eight race update. Dukes, Dixon, Gill, Sigliano, and the rest you can see. Oh, a bit of a moment there for Riley Dukes. These whoops are big, and he's a decent-sized kid, Riley Dukes, but a lot of time they're still in that, that maturation process where they're not quite big enough to muscle up and hold these machines. 
and these whoops, they're quite big, so it's going to take a little bit for these younger guys to develop that strength, to muscle the bike through that, which a lot of the time they're either, they tend to be just hanging on for grim death. You know, that in itself causes problems with arm pump and everything else. So yeah. Riley Jukes at the moment, looks like his timing's pretty good. Yeah, our second place rider, Jai Dixon, is an example of the converse, if you like, to our race leader. Dixon is a diminutive youngster with plenty of growing left to do, and he would find this incredibly physical. Tough, tough. We see small kids like Caleb Barham and last year Cooper Posniak coming through. They were small kids, but they were good and strong, and they could manage it. And, and as those guys get further into their careers, the, what they'll find is actually being short is going to be of great use to them. Are uh, like Ricky Carmichael, for instance, who's a smaller guy, but the power of the big bites really suits the smaller guys, and they get a much better power to weight ratio. So, you know, long term, it's probably going to work out in their favour if they are a little bit smaller. Oh, he's had a crack there, Riley Jukes, and he sent it off that triple and made it work for him. And a lot of these kids, some of them are jumping the triples, some of them aren't. Riley Jukes has opted to jump it. You have to say there's probably at least a second and a half, maybe even two seconds in that one jump alone when he does. Well, credit to SB Promotions, promoter of the opening two rounds of the Australian Championship in season 2016. Scott and Paul, the duo at the helm, and they were very forthright in uh, suggesting that the kids, the juniors, needed to be part of the TV coverage, and it's great to see. There's the checkered flag now for Riley Dukes. He was lapping riders as he crossed the start-finish line. And that's a fairly comfortable win. Getting it done in 6 minutes, 31.31. So about a six-second margin between first and second in the end. So there's no doubt Jai Dixon was starting to struggle physically in the latter stages of the race on bike 292. So checking it out now, there was a gap of 5.810 seconds between first and second, but the Husqvarna Emerging victorious for Riley Dukes, who frankly had it all under control. Dixon Gill and the Siglianos rounding out the top five. The others you can see, and here's the race recap with Cam Williams. So Riley Dukes looked very, very good early, and as I said, he controlled this from the outside, which is a bit rare. He's got his nose in front, what we've seen with the bigger bikes, and anyone to the inside has controlled this, where Riley Dukes just had so much of an advantage early on. Great drive with that Husky, and out he got. Once he got to the lead Riley Dukes, he really wasn't ahead of him. Did a good job, Riley Dukes, and we saw a little bit of carnage, as we do expect sometimes with these juniors. A bit of a tough one there. Okay, Riley Dukes, far too good for his rivals. Here he is with Jason. Junior Lights winner Riley Duke. Dukes must be pretty cool to ride in front of this many people at a big event like this. Yeah, uh, first time riding Supercross and yeah, first time riding in such a big crowd. And yeah, it's, it's been great, especially at the night time. A little bit different, but something fun, something used to. Overall win for the day, it must be really pleasing to come away with the winner's trophy. Yeah, the overall was uh, good. A bit unlucky there for Jai, but you know, Put Husqvarna on the top step, and yeah, couldn't have done it without my sponsors: Husqvarna, Thor, Beret, LKI Clothing, um, Alpine Star Boots, Atlas Neck Braces, and yeah, everyone else that puts in for us. Well done, great effort. Yeah, so well done to Riley Dukes, to Jai Dixon, and to Thomas Gill, enjoying the spoils of their efforts. Of course, it's not alcoholic beverage in their case. And we will recap the championship points at the completion of the Junior Lights Racing tonight. Heading <laughs> into the next round of Toowoomba. And that has got to be more frustrating than anything you can imagine, particularly when the TV camera is rolling. There we go. You got it now. There's a lot of things to learn when you're a kid and spraying the champagne is one of those ones that they've never done. There's the Junior Lights points there. Riley Duke sits in front of Jai Robertson, Jai, uh, Jai Dixon, I should say, Jai Roberts, Thomas Gill and Drew Sigliano are getting the better of the battle of the twins with his brother, Jai. Yeah, and the Junior Lights will contest the second round of the championship at Toowoomba on October 14. Well, before the next race, and we are certainly advancing to the business end of proceedings now, we'll take you back to former Triple World Speedway champion, Jason Crump, who's with another member of motocross and supercross royalty. Another rider being inducted into the Australian Supercross Hall of Fame is Peter Melton. Peter retired from racing in 2001. Again, like Glenn, must be nice to be honoured in this way a few years after you quit racing. It is, mate. It's awesome. Um, I love the sport. It's been 15 years since I've raced professionally, but uh, I, I rode professionally for 15 years, so very grateful. Um, love the sport. You know, I met a lot of nice people in the sport. 
and um, it's, it's nice to be here and see it growing. It's great. The job that Scott Bannon and his crew are doing here in Jimboomba to put an arena in like this and, and a track in like this, we've got you know American guys here racing, not winning it all their own way. All you guys that started out as started out in Supercross in Australia, you must be really proud to see how far it's come in a relatively short space of time. Oh, most definitely, it, it's amazing. You know, Scott's doing an awesome job. I'm sure there's a lot more people behind it, you know, that help also. Um, it, it's it's great that they, you know, get the Americans over here so that so that it uh, it helps the level of Australian Supercross. You know, it's, it should push us forward. Uh, bring the level up higher and um, you know that's that's exactly what we're looking for is to try and get the Aussies top level you know. Well done on a great career and enjoy your induction tonight. Thank you very much. Peter Melton with Jason Crump one of the really big names of his era along with uh, you know the Dax, the Ashkenazis, the Hogans, the Bills to name just some we now present more of the kits for you some highlights before we advance to the finals of SX1 and SX2 Junior 85cc, Darby, Noonan, Zorpas, Rowe, Adams, Bell, Crutch, Deberson and Barras. They are the starters here. And looking forward to this one. It's a seven lap journey. An opportunity to put the youngsters on television again. Thanks for watching the opening round of the Australian Supercross Championship from Jim Boomba on Fox Sports Around Australia. It's always interesting when we see these 85s go off. Who holds their breath longer? Is it the kid on the gate or is it dad behind the gate? We're going to see now whether dads fall over behind the gate or here we go. Or mum in the grandstand. Yeah, mum in the grandstand is probably a little bit nervous. Sometimes mum on the pit board as well. She can be a little bit vicious. Good start. Looks to me like it's going to be Josh Sorbus maybe working his way through there, is it? Yep, I can hold it. You've got it. Done a good job with Josh Sorbus. He had a terrible run here last year. Got cleaned out in the last few corners. And He's got a little bit heated, but Josh Orbis has got a great start here. As I said, he's raced here quite a bit. He spent a lot of time in the, the Queensland area racing here and his brother. Their dad obviously does a lot of work with his Orbis brothers. And he's opted to go the inside line there, an interesting while on that slick hard pack stuff, and he's going to pay the price there. Tyler Darby's got to the inside and made the pass there on him. So good move by Tyler Darby. That outside line proved to be much, much quicker. Now what Zorbis going to do is he's going to try and go to the inside here and show a wheel on oh, Darby. Does a good job to hold around the outside. Very, very consistently and well here, Tyler Darby. Darby has done well. We saw Zorbas get away to a good start and he led clearly. But Darby, well, if I could use the expression coming from the clouds, he did. Was uh, several metres back in second and then pounced to take the race lead. And now Darby is starting to clear out on bike 241. And a very, very good job so far, Darby. It's interesting to watch these little machines and these young guys try and struggle over these whoops. The bikes just really aren't set up for a big set of whoops, and a lot of these guys aren't physically strong enough to hold the bike up and hold themselves off the bike. So they do struggle, and some of the young guys will try and potentially double through them as opposed to skip through the whoops and skim them. They'll try to jump them. It's interesting to see Tyler Darby there. He just muscled up and rode through the whoops the best he could. And very, very good job here. So whoever's setting up his bike, Tyler Darby, they've got that thing set up for him very, very well. He's a decent-sized kid on this 85. We'll see him line up at these whoops again. You see here, he's opted to go to a different line. He's just not built for these whoops. He's pretty much hit the back of every one of those, which you really don't want to do. So leading comfortably now, Tyler Darby. Zorbas is still in second. The others are sorting themselves out. The likes of Adams and uh, Crutch and Noonan, to name but three of them. About mid-race distance covered here in our highlights package of this junior race at the Jim Boomba Stadium. The big bikes in the pits preparing to roar for their respective finals. We look forward to that with no little expectation. Saw some good performances in SX1 and SX2 during the heats a little earlier. It's a massive gap between first and second. There's the second place rider now, Josh Resorbis. Play for the pass on track. This is going to be watch to the outside there. Get that to the on the outside there. Then Darby shows a bit of a wheel here and puts a little bit of pressure on Zorbis and then makes the pass over that trigger. Just backside to landing a little bit better. That gives him a good drive through that next turn. That is job done there for Tyler Darby. It's a good pass. Oh, he's there in the 100% turn. That doesn't look promising at all for Darby. He is stuck under that machine. So any 
any advantage he's had there, I'd say he's going to lose. And there is Josh Orbis going by right now. So Tyler Darby needs to get that thing going pretty quickly. Slamming Sammy Noonan, I think it might be able to decide to sneak on through there as well. So Darby shedding positions hand over fist at the moment. You've got it all right. Well, there's the the recap now with Zorbas, Noonan, Adams. Darby has lost a host of spots. He'll rejoin the race back in fourth, obviously. And Crutch is fifth on the racetrack at the present time. So Zorbas may have been handed a victory here that he didn't even expect, given the superiority of Tyler Darby. But for Darby, it fell apart at the seams. Yeah, tough one for Tyler Darby. What these kids will learn sometimes is that discretion is the better part of valor, isn't it? We know that as adults, but these young guys, they are full of testosterone and full of go. And sometimes you just got to slow down half a second to go two seconds quicker. And unfortunately for Tyler Darby, that's going to be a tough lesson for him to learn. Interesting to note as well, David, this track is starting to get hard packed and slick. It's starting to get shiny. So as we get a little bit further into the night's proceedings, this track is going to get very, very hard. Going to be very different tyre choice, different tyre pressures they're going to use. Potentially look at some of their suspension settings as well. Probably more so on the acceleration and braking parts. Interesting to see young Zorbus using that inside line and opting not to go to the outside, leaving himself open as he gets the last lap board now. Yeah, not far to go now for Zorbus. I said it a little earlier. Congratulations to the track staff because there has not been one skerrick of dust. That can be an issue in this sport obviously we're now racing under blazing floodlights so as long as the right amount of moisture is put into the surface during the day obviously we won't have a dust problem once you reach uh, the stage of racing under lights in fact what starts to happen is the moisture starts to come up from beneath doesn't it it does yeah and what you'll see the guys from tomka works do with the help from Dusan and Bobcat, they'll get the moisture into this track maybe five or six days beforehand. They'll smudge it over so it can't be, you know, it can't be evaporated. And then as race day comes, the moisture then, as you said, starts to work its way up through the rut. So a lot of the work that we're seeing here, this great work by the track staff at, at Scott Banner Promotions, this is done prior, well days and weeks in advance to make sure that this track is not too dusty. We've seen it get dusty. And as you said, it's not a lot of fun for the spectators to sit out there in a big pile of dust. Final lap and check and flag for Joshua Zorbers in the 85cc class. And Samuel Noonan pretty happy with himself in second spot. We saw him clenching his fist with delight as he went across the finish jump. Well done to young Joshua Zorbers. He had a little bit of luck, it's got to be said. Tyler Darby had taken the lead and was starting to clear out, but dropped the bike and lost a host of placing. So Noonan arrives on the scene and congratulates the winner of the race. So Zorbas, Noonan, Adams, Darby still in fourth position, then Crutch, Deverson and Barris. And it took Joshua Zorbas about six and a half minutes to complete that seven lap journey in the junior category. Great experience for these young guys. We get the gate drop there again and from the very outside, Max Barris got a reasonable start, but you'd have to say the 241 at Tyler Darby struck me as the pick of the field. Josh Zorbis did a very, very good job to keep the thing on two wheels. And we all know that with motorcycle racing, if you don't keep it on two wheels, well, there's not much chance you're going to win the race. Good start here as well. Zorbis, as I said, this is where Tyler Darby started to squeeze on. You can see him just backside this triple a little bit better. That gives him that good drive into that turn and allows him to get the pass now on Josh Zorbis. And had plenty of clear track here. And then this. So unfortunate for Tyler Darby. Yep. He was doing everything right up to that point. This goes to show how difficult the sport can be. You've got to have a little bit of luck to go from start to finish. Here's Jason Crump. Winner of the 85 class final, Tyler Darby. Great effort there, tough track. Yeah, track's very tough, especially on the 85 against these big boys. Boys kept me on my toes, made a few little mistakes, but got to learn from it, eh? Track's awesome. Must be a big thrill to ride in front of this many people at an event this big. Oh, it's amazing. It's just so fun. It keeps, it's just a massive adrenaline rush. It's just, everyone keeps it even more fun. It's just sick. Is there anything on this track that you can't jump that the big boys can? Yeah, I couldn't do the triple or the um, gator back onto the tabletop, but that's just life. I've got to work on it, don't I? <laughs> what a kid. What a winner. What an attitude. Well done, mate. Thanks. Woo. Ah, winners are grinners, aren't they? He's well pleased with himself. And recapping the progress points in the championship on 25 points of Joshua Zorbas. On 22, it's Samuel Noonan. And then Kip Adams 
in third on 20, ahead of round two coming up at Toowoomba. It's good to have you with us. And to the winners go the spoils. Still ahead, the final of SX2 and, of course, SX1. What a night here. I'm Misty, and you're watching round one of the Australian Supercross Championships at Jimboomba on Fox Sports. And as you can see, the people love it. On Fox Sports, you're watching the opening round of the Australian Supercross Championship from Jim Boomba in Queensland. Our coverage supported by Hills International College, Yamaha, the LED Lighting Group, and a and &E Group Civil and Mining. Welcome back to Jim Boomba. What a great time for a feature on the fantastic Honda team. 25-year-old Jimmy Dakotas from Peabody in Massachusetts is one of the truly big names lining up in tonight's opening round of the Australian Supercross Championship. The American pro began riding as a four-year-old and his career has been impressive, especially given that for much of his career he has been classified as a privateer. Dakotas enters tonight's event as the defending SX2 champion. I'm excited to be here. I really, I really enjoy the environment of the Australian Supercross Series and I really uh, enjoy my bike and, you know, Steve at SPMX has stopped me dialed in this year as well as last year. So uh, I'm just, I'm really happy to be here and for sure I want to repeat what I did last year, but the goal is just stay safe and stay healthy and have some good battles and, and, and come home safe. That's always the goal. Dakota says one of the benefits of riding in Australia is the fact that it provides him with an ideal pre-season for the American schedule that awaits him. This is a big uh, pre-season race for me, you know, in training and trying to get strong for when I go back to America and, and also ride for Honda, which I'm very fortunate to do that. So, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is actually really big for me. You know, a lot of people don't look at it as big as, as in America, but to me and this team, it's, it's just as big and it's... Every race, no matter where you are, there's always good guys and there's always going to be guys to challenge you. And, you know, the Australians in the SX2 and now uh, Gavin Faith's also in SX2 this year. So um, it's going to be tough, you know. It's, it's never easy. It's, it's always going to be hard. And it's just, just trying to stay healthy and, and do my laps, 15 laps, and I think uh, I'll, be, I'll be good. But I'm just I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have the number one and be able to come back and have Honda allow me to come here and, and defend my championship. Jimmy's teammate Gavin Faith needs no introduction in the sport and his fellow Honda rider warrants plenty of respect. Yeah, for sure. I know I've ridden with Gavin all last year when he was on the 450, so I know he's got the speed and I know he's got the talent. Just uh, think whoever can be headstrong and do 15 laps will come away a victor, but either way, a second to Gavin's still all right. You know, I don't mind it. I like racing Gavin and, you know, as long as we're on the podium first round and having fun, and that's, that's what we're looking for. Dakota says there are very often differences in the Supercross circuits here in Australia when compared to the United States, albeit small ones. It's a little bit different. The tracks are a little bit easier. Some of them are, you know, the AusX Open last year was pretty tough, but uh, here it's it's pretty close though. They're, they're, every year it seems they're even better than last year. So uh, I don't know, they're, they're making big grounds towards what they're doing in the US. And, uh, I think I'm just, you know, I'm actually proud of all the promoters over here for promoting such a good series and uh, having such awesome rounds and bringing in all the fans and sponsors and teams. It's, uh, it's really, it's a really a professionally run event. Yeah, Jimmy Dakota's one of the stars to watch in the SX2 finale, which comes your way over 15 laps. Ahead of that, let's head down to Jason Crump for a pre-race interview. Jackson, third quick qualifier. It's a pretty hectic area here on the start. You're right in between a few of your main rivals. It's going to be crucial to get a good jump and get away. Oh, yeah, definitely. The first corner is always like uh, a bit touch and go, but, you know, we're just going to try and get out to the best start we can and uh, hopefully put in a solid first round and get some good points. You're the first rider who's mentioned that this is round one of the six-round series. I think there's a few guys that are just putting it all on the line tonight, but you're in it for the long haul? Yeah, definitely in it for the long haul. I mean, I've only been on this bike uh, a week or so now, so, you know, I'm still uh, trying to find my feet, but, um, you know, the whole team uh, has been behind me, like, well this week, and, like, I'm pretty comfortable on the bike, so, you know, we got, uh, we got a couple more rounds, like, we got six or seven more rounds, so... You know, you can't win it at the first round, but you can lose it. So, you know, we're just going to try to be consistent and have a solid night. Wise words. Good luck, mate. 
Now the second last race on today's program is the finale of SX2. Can't wait for this one. We know that Mel Ross and Faith are in blistering form. A lot of bikes on the start line here. 15 laps is the race distance. Have a look at the crowd at Jim Boomba. Wow, they pack them in here, don't they? And this is going to be an exciting one. It's a full gate. We've got a full gate at a Supercross race. SX2, Jesse Madden from the very outside. on He's missed the jump. Down that start, they charge. Looks like Josh Case has got a good one. Kieran Hall with another beauty on the 144. And then sneaking up the inside, sneaky Gavin Faith. He's controlled that one to absolute perfection. He takes the lead from Josh Case, slipping in the third. Hayden Meros shuffled back to fourth. Oh, Dylan Wills, all sorts Ooh. of nasty sideways. He's going to skate with that one, and he's taken someone else down with him as well. I'm not quite sure who that is. He's lost a glove in that one, actually. That was a big well. one. Good to see him up and OK. Look, it's inevitable that things go wrong, isn't it? Early stage of the race, adrenaline, nerves, determination to get a good position. And from time to time, things go pear-shaped, especially in this sport. Race leader is Gavin Faith. 46 in second, rather 45, Hayden Melross. Riding on board with Jackson Richardson now, who is also running prominently. Great vision, the onboard camera there. Yeah, he's right on the back there of the number 14, Jared Stapleton, the banger. Lives at Road Bus, Ro Ro Rosebud Motocross Track, I should say, in Victoria. So he knows his way around dirt bike track. Oh, good move there from Josh Keisha. Looks like Jared Stapleton ran a little bit wide there, and Keisha snuck in there and got the job done. Now Stapleton gets to the inside of Keisha. These two have been going at it for years. Jackson Richardson going to get the jump on Josh Keisha there as we go on board with Richardson. He's on the inside there of Josh Keisha on the outside now, and he's been squeezed a little bit. Jack's being pretty polite there. Another one of these phenomenal Far North Queensland products, Jackson Richardson, who's in Gordon Vale, just a little bit south of Cairns. Now he's going to try and get the job done on Keisha, and he does. He does a good job there. Keisha just shuts that one down early and then gets good drive through the whoops and instantaneously puts a gap between himself. Oh, and a bit of commentator's curse there. For Jats as well, just a little bit over the bars, nothing too major. He's gotten away with it. Now Wade Hunter on the charge. That's Jackson Richardson's teammate. Another one of these fun with Queensland products. He's out of Cairns as well. He's looking to put the pass on his teammate. He's good buddy, Jackson Richardson. At the front at the moment, though, it is this guy, Gavin Faith. Give him a lead like this, and man, he is going to be very, very hard to deal with. Yeah, Mel Ross in second. We know how good that Mel Ross is, but he's going to need to be maybe even better than good. To reel in Gavin Faith, the cut leader at this early stage of this 15 lap SX2 finale. Let's uh, recap this on the replay. That's what went wrong, and there's riders biting the dust. That's Dylan Wills, and Jackson Richardson has dodged a bullet there because Dylan Wills has clipped him as he's been in the air, and somehow another Jackson's managed to skate on it. Now Wade Hunter looking to get to the inside on Richardson, and he does. He just takes him high on the burn, there's no contact. That's what you would call a good, clean teammates pass. Probably won't have Gavin Eels from Serco particularly happy, but the pass needs to be done. So Wade Hunter now shuffles his way in the third place. The difference here between these two guys is that Richardson, obviously, only a couple of weeks on the bike versus Hunter really twice. Full credit, you mentioned a the name there, Gavin Eels. What a supporter he has been of this sport and this championship. His uh, Serco brand has done a wonderful job over an extended period. And he needs to be congratulated for that. Mel Ross in second. We just saw him blast by. And Hunter is doing a good job, as is Richardson, Stapleton. And Jaren Stapleton, now he's the full privateer. Got very, very little backing to come and do this. Just he and his dad, their old Ford Transit man, I think it is. They get around the country and do it. So it's good to see Banger back out here and doing it. And now Wade Hunter is going to start to put the squeeze on Jaren Stapleton. Very, very good super cross rider. Did a very average outdoor season by his own standards. I'd say by the looks of it, probably only going to see Wade Hunter contest super cross only next year. That's the way it's panning out. We can hide the gather at this point. There's the lone shot. We'll pick up a few of those a little bit later on. Good battle going on here, though, at this point in time. Looks to me like it's a bit of a roadblock to Red Stapleton on Wade Hunter now. Watch Hunter try and scrub this, get low and drive to the inside, which he does. And Durant Stapleton has no choice but to give that position away because Hunter came in now with Durant Stapleton going to return the favour on Hunter. He tries to and Hunter is awake to it and just runs it around the outside gets that pass stuck. So a little bit of a wheel tap there and Durant Stapleton all sorts of loose through there. 
Hunter running a little bit of a quiet line and carries the speed. And I would say now that he's going to gather Duran Stapleton and start to look forward towards Hayden Norris. That part of the circuit, the riders just exited, you can see, on the dark side. So that would present us challenges too. And the flat lighting otherwise absolutely superb. Have a look at this action again on the replay. You've got a crystal ball. You actually anticipated that move before the rider did. Yeah, you can just see the way that his body language changed and the way that he actually described that jump. He was looking to get lower and get back on the gas a little bit sooner and get the drive to the inside there, Wade Hunter. And, and I might have been to a Supercross race or two over my time, so I've seen a few of those passes executed. This kid here, man, he is a proper talent. He is a man-child. He is huge, Hayden Norris. Really should be riding a 450, but with his commitments in the US, riding with 250, he's a big guy on a small bike, and I would expect Hayden Norris will be back in the US again next year and doing very, very well on the Supercross circuit. I'll tell you who's struggling in this race. The defending champion, Dakotas. He's well outside the top half dozen at this stage and got a lot of work to do. Yeah, he's, as you said, he's doing very, very poorly at this point, Jimmy Dakotas. He's worked his way forward a little bit, but I would have expected Dakotas to be a lot closer to the front than what we're seeing at this point. You know, as I said, he hasn't earlier in the heat race. He hasn't raced a lot this year, Dakotas, so maybe struggling with some setup on that bike, maybe struggling with himself. Who knows, but I would expect that Jimmy Dakotas will put a charge on there, David, that's for sure. Mel Ross, who we're currently watching in second, is a couple of seconds behind the race leader, Gavin Faith. Faith, of course, uh, an earlier heat race winner tonight and doing a magnificent job on this Jim Boomba racing surface. We've got some blue flags waving out there now. Yeah, the lap traffic's starting to come in play. That's Dylan Wills. He'll be bitterly disappointed with that one, having a crash early on, Dylan Wills. And it looks to me like there's an issue with that machine. Otherwise, we would have seen Dylan towards the front. Hayden Melros looking very, very good. Living and training in Florida, incidentally. We will see the likes of Gavin Faith train Gavin Faith down there with Ricky Carmichael. But Hayden Melros working at this point in his career with a guy by the name of Tim Ferry. AMA freaks, you know, the Red Dog has been around a long time, very, very good trainer. Now as we pick up pictures of Wade Hunter, very, very good technical rider, Wade Hunter, when tracks get gnarly and rough and just the kind of thing that other people don't like to ride, this kid really does come into his own. It's a sign of a good rider, isn't it? Making the difficult look easy. Lap 11 of 15, as we count down to the chequered flag in this finale for SX2. Another reminder, round two of the championship to Woomba Showground, October 14. And our cameras will be there too for a delayed telecast on Fox Sports. Australia's sports leader getting behind the Australian Supercross Championship in 2016, including live coverage of uh, the two-night Super Show in Sydney in mid-November. As we continue to watch uh, Mel Ross, and now we focus our attention back up front with Gavin Faith threading the eye of the needle, lapping some of the slower bikes. The top 10 update shows you where they're running on this man-made torture test at the present time. It is. The folks at Hill Co Hills College have struck a deal with Scott Banner to run this race here. I have to say that the guys from the LED lighting group have done a spectacular job on this track. This is daylight out here, and you can see in our pictures how good the lighting here is. It's really, really special. Just apart from one little part of the circuit that I alluded to earlier but in the main fantastic and uh, the promoters Scott and Paul have done a wonderful job as is evidenced by the sellout crowd the jam-packed audience tonight at Jim Boomba just a couple of laps to go for Gavin Faith on the Honda heading for home he's done a great job Gavin Faith I know you read Konsky will be there he's got any fingernails left you read Konsky they're going to be down to stubs very very soon Guys from Motorcycling Australia would be ecstatic with this crowd and the turnout as well. Supercross struggle for a few years there now. Looks like the likes of Scott Bannon and the guys are really dragging it back into the fore. And as you said, live television coverage along with television coverage on Fox Sports. And this one, Supercross is back in a big way. No doubt. So the only thing that Gavin Faith needs to be concerned about at the moment is terminal boredom. He's actually skipped ahead. He's a fair way in front of his nearest rival, Mel Ross, whom we're looking at on screen now. But uh, the only thing that's going to stop Faith from taking victory here is himself. Yeah, or something unforeseen happening at this point in time. We've seen that happen with Gavin Faith a few years ago when he gifted a championship to Luke Stike. But Gavin Faith is a much more mature rider now. He's won two arena cross championships at that time. So I would expect to see Gavin Faith just go on in emphatic fashion and just close this one out. So it's Faith leading Melross, then Hunter. 
Jackson Richardson, Stapleton, Keisha. And Dakotas now up to seventh, the American defending champion on bike number one. We haven't sighted him in this, in this event, in this final at all. And as you can see, last lap board now being shown to Gavin Faith, who embarks on his final lap of the Jim Boomba Stadium. He's done a spectacular job, Gavin Faith. And as I said a little bit earlier, you give this guy a sniff of a lead and he's just kind of ride away from him. What I would say about Jimmy Dakota is that he will come back out swinging in four weeks in Toowoomba. This won't sit very well for Jimmy Dakota and he'll put his head together with you, even the guys from Wanda. They'll work out what's going wrong here, they'll analyse it, they won't think too much about it, they'll hit the practice track and they'll come out swinging for round two. So Lita continues on his winning way. Uh, has a comfortable lead over Hayden Milros and Wade Hunter. But he'll be delighted with this Gavin Faith. It's been a will-perfect performance, really, to take what appears to be a certain victory now in the SX2 final to the checkered flag he charges. The flames and the fireworks erupt above the stadium here at Jim Boomba. And your main event winner in SX2 this evening, Gavin Faith, defeating Hayden Melross. And third in the checker will be Wade Hunter. In advance of Richardson, Stapleton, Keisha, Dakotas, Woods Hill, Whiteman. And that is the top 10 for you. Solid ride there from Wade Hunter. And I'd say Jimmy Dakotas, he's got a lot of work to do in seventh, but it's not out of the realms of possibility he'll come back. Got a good clean jump. Everyone got through this first turn reasonably well. You can see it on the reverse here. So we are looking for the knobby hole shot. Keisha controlled the inside, but Gavin Faith got a little bit closer to the inside. 64 of Dylan Wills on that race line machine. He was really, really good there as well, but got all sorts of pear shape there, and he's just quit Jackson Richardson and gone down. Yeah, spectacular. Another angle. More carnage ensuing. Could have been a lot worse. Gee, that was that was a big off, wasn't it? The second rider that that crashed. That was the pass by Hunter. Moving up a spot. A highly entertaining opening period to the SX2 final. And the winner though, Gavin Faith, too good. Here's Jason Crump right now. SX2 winner, Gavin Faith. Almost a perfect race there. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, my Penrite Honda and Pirelli tires really got me off to the gate good and snuck around that first corner first just like I had hoped. And, you know, I rode a solid race. I gapped him a little bit there in the beginning and then just tried to tried to maintain a pace that was that was uh, safe and uh, without making too big a mistake. So, yeah, it couldn't have worked out any better. Hayden Melros, not quite the race you wanted, but you were on the pace and you pushed hard for a second place. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's, you know, coming in so quick off uh, off the motocross series, you know, it was hard to get prepared and everything. But uh, we, we did what we did, uh, did what we had to do, and, you know, we got a long break now. So we'll do, uh, do a lot of homework, get, get the bike uh, just even better, you know, and come out for Toowoomba and uh, try to do the same. But if not, one step better. Third place in the SX2 class, Wade Hunter. Wade, awesome ride. Tough, tough first couple of laps. Yeah, it was tough. I didn't make it easy on myself. I got a really average start and then just got bunched up on the first couple of laps and didn't get all the rhythm sections. And I'm not sure where I was, sixth or seventh, but I definitely had to work for it. And then I was coming through strong. I thought at one point I might be able to catch Hayden for second. And then um, I started making a few mistakes and thought, you know, I've had a big night, so I just set off a third, and yeah, still good points for the championship. Okay, thanks to Jason Crump. Congratulations to the top three tonight. And they naturally uh, spearhead the leaderboard on the championship chase, leading into round two at Toowoomba. Faith on 25 points, and then it was Mel Ross, followed by Hunter on 22 and 20 points, respectively. So, uh, well, there is the hardware for the top three. And there's no doubt our winner's a happy man. He is a very happy man. This is Hayden Melos. I think the big thing in that point score is the 11 points that Jimmy Cotis has given head start to his teammate Gavin Faith. A lot of work to do to make that one up. Okay, so at this juncture, we'll head back to Jason Crump for another interview ahead of the SX1 finale. So you were in a good position in the first ride. Did you enjoy that one? Yeah, look, I really enjoyed the heat race. I had a bunch of fun out there. It's I've been raced Supercross since 2012. I went over to Europe and did World Championship gigs, so uh, I'm excited to be back. It's uh, really close, the crowd's right there with you, so it's, uh, it makes you nervous. But third gate pick, you know, it's pretty good. We get an inside gate, which I'm happy about. Um, we're just going to try and get off to a good race and ride uh, 20 laps that Todd Waters can do. So uh, what that gets us, we'll see. Okay, here's the, uh, the starting list. 
Reardon and Brayton been in good form tonight. Waters and Ferris. Ferris was particularly good in his heat. You'd expect that Hahn will give plenty of cheek as well. It's a terrific field here. You'd expect nothing less for the final of SX1. Yeah, full gate as well. Even great to see the likes of Barry Sorowski of the Sorowski coaching machine. He's out on the very outside here, Barry Sorowski. He has been around since Moses was a little man, let me tell you, but he can still really twist it. John Krusik on the very outside of this one. Jesse Dobson, Nathan Crawford in the mix. This is going to be an absolute clang. Are we getting the gate dropped? Oh, John Krusik. That is about as unfortunate as you can get there for John Krusik. To the front, though, Will Hahn has got a beauty. Daniel Reardon, or Dean Ferris, I should say, has got a good one as well. Daniel Reardon back in fourth. Cade Mosig sits in third. Now to the inside goes Justin Brayton, trying to make something happen now. Will Hahn on the outside of Dean Ferris. He's going to try and get a jump here. John O'Krusik's in all sorts of hurt. A little bit of confliction going on there. Wow. As you would be. That was spectacular. Off the start, it went wrong for Krusik. Ferris has got the knobby underwear hole shot, though and leads this one during the early stages of the 20-lap finale for SX1. We ride on board. It's fantastic vision, isn't it? Oh, Waters off the track there. Todd Waters has gone off the track, and he's rejoined in the same position, so he's got a fair bit of work to do there. I'd say Daniel Reardon from that onboard footage, he'd be happy to be where he is at the moment. He knows there's a few guys with not a lot of experience in front of him and some guys with a bit of riding rust, so he's not going to be too concerned about that. Will Hahn, I'd have to question his fitness and see how he's going to go long term for a full 20 lap main on this one. Um, Dean Ferris is not a noted supercross rider, but I think he's a really good supercross rider. And as I said earlier on, you work with the great man, Roger DeCosta, for an entire supercross season, you're gonna pick up some tips. So don't think that Dean Ferris is gonna go too far outside the top five in this one. Justin Brayton, though, right now, that number 10 Honda Genuine machine looks very, very good. He's done a full supercross season, Got injured in the motocross, but he's back at it again, and I think he looks very, very good right now, Justin Brayton. So Ferris flying the flag high for Craig Dak Racing Yamaha on bike triple one, but he is under siege, isn't he, from Justin Brayton, who's coming to get him. A break back to third, Will Hahn, who was second prior to Brayton overtaking him. About a lap ago now it was, and you can see just through there, Brayton, he seems to have a bit in reserve, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He's just looking, he's being very patient, and he is noted to be a very patient rider, Justin Brayton. He's not going to go and put it into the inside of Dean Ferris. Here he goes now, looking to go to the inside on Dean Ferris. Gets a good drive. Ferris smells it coming and pulls it up a little bit early, but he's powerless to do anything about it. Now I'd expect that Justin Brayton is just going to go into preservation mode and just start, whoa, as he gets a bit of commentator's curse. Go into preservation mode and just start clicking off laps now and pulling away. He knows he's got superior lap speed on Dean Ferris. And as you can see, straight away, Ferris with a little bit of a bobble and opens it up. Now we go on board with Daniel Reardon, and he's in a three-way tussle with his teammate, Dean Ferris, at the far right, and the 66 of Will Hahn on the left on that MPE Monster Energy Kawasaki machine. Will Hahn giving it everything, as you can see, the body language. He's leaving nothing to spare. That's the uh, yellow livery ahead of uh, Reardon. Meantime, uh, Brayton is starting to clear out just slightly. Ferris is hanging in there on bike triple one so Craig Dack has uh, two bikes in the top four at this stage of the race now we can see Will Hahn on 66 being swamped by the two blue Yamahas so Ferris maintains second and Daniel Reardon has moved up to third good ride going from Todd Waters here as well he's found himself back in fifth he was as far back as about maybe sixth or seventh I think earlier on Todd Waters so he's definitely got some clear fracking track in front of him I should say and he's making it work at this point. He's about to start putting the squeeze on Will Hahn. As I said, Will Hahn with two dreadful years of injury. So he's more than happy just to be going racing at this point. Now Todd Waters tries to get that Wilson's Cool Air Suzuki to the outside of him and make that pass stick. Going to work a different line there, Todd Waters, and that one's not going to pay for him at this point. But you can see that he's got better lap speed than what Will Hahn's carrying at the moment. Dean Ferris, he's got his teammate climbing all over the back of him. I would suggest that Daniel Reardon and Dean Ferris weren't teammates. Well, then Daniel Reardon would elbow up and make a pass on this one. But at this point, Craig Duck really liked that kind of thing. Most of teammates. Okay. That he used to do it himself. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> That's good. Only kidding. So we're on board with Reardon. His teammate Ferris immediately ahead of him. And uh, Brayton, I reckon he's about one and a half seconds clear of the snarling pack at this point in time our race leader justin brayton and things are starting to well settle down i guess if i can use that word if there's such a description in supercross plenty of space between the riders 
And I don't see any carnage in Schwing for the moment. No, they all tend to find their piece of track at this point in the middle of the race, the experience guys. Just for John O'Cruzic, that gate has popped back up and hooked his back wheel. So I'm not quite sure whether someone's charged gate or just bounced. There's that pass from the lead by Dustin Brayton. That's a good, clean, professional pass by Justin Brayton. Ran it in and got the job done and made it stick. And at this point in time, he is going to be very, very hard to beat. He'll look to close this one out. This is how deep into lap traffic we're getting now. We're only seven laps in and Justin Brayton starting to lap right. It's, this is going to be a long night for some of these guys. Yeah, sure. We could see Joel Newton back there on bike 141. Now Daniel Reardon, the defending Essex one champ. Oh, sorry, Tappan. Todd Waters got to the inside of Will Hahn there. And Will Hahn to the left-hand side now. Waters got the inside line and he's going to control it and run Will Hahn wide and make that pass. So good move from Todd Waters. I think Will Hahn was just looking a little bit ragged prior to that. Just getting a little bit angry on the throttle and spinning the back wheel and giving Todd Waters a little bit better impetus. And you can see now on those whoops, Will Hahn not super comfortable and starting to struggle on those whoops. And as I said, I think fitness will probably be the main thing for Will Hahn as well at this point in time. So Hahn continuing. Todd Waters ahead of him on 47. They're involved in a good battle. Those two. Three riders ahead of them being Brayton, Ferris and Reardon. You can see there Reardon at the bottom of screen. Some of the onboard shots uh, emanating from uh, the Jim Boomba Stadium tonight. Just fantastic action. Amazing how well the little cameras uh, are able to to handle the punishment of this sport. It gives you that different perspective. You actually get to ride long. You ride long, you see the guys and the proximity that they race in and, and how things change. This is a really solid ride from Todd Waters here. He's now closing up on Dan Reed. So as you heard Dan Reed say in one of our interviews earlier, he's only been back on the bike for four weeks. So he'll be looking just to get rid of a bit of this race rust that he's running at the moment. But Todd Waters, he has got a sale for a win right now. He's got past a full-time American racer, and now he's putting the squeeze on Daniel Reed, so it's a good ride. But this man out in front, Justin Brayton, you have to say at this point, though, that Dean Ferris is doing a spectacular job. I think he's actually catching it. Yeah, he's doing a very, very good job. This battle for third and fourth is looking very good as well, as Waters looks to switch up his line and try something different on Daniel Reed. Very, very experienced Daniel Reed after a few years in the USA. Be overly deterred by the fact that Todd Waters is back there. He'll be able to hear him, see him now as Waters tries a different line around the outside through those whoops. And Waters is going to make the pass here on Daniel Reed. He gets the job done. So Todd Waters at the midway point of this race is in third place. Great ride for number 47. Yeah, terrific. But as you said, Reed, he's cool, calm, and collected. He won't be panicking by that. And the plan now will be simply to stick with Waters and wait for him to make an error. Leave the door open, and it may have happened already, has it? No. Reardon still in fourth, chasing hard. Meanwhile, Ferris is definitely starting to close the gap on the race leader, Justin Brayton. So a couple of key battles here worth watching. This will be an interesting one for Justin Brayton to see how this pans out. We're at the midway point of the race, so these middle five laps between you know, around 10 and 15, Justin Brayton will probably smooth as we see a little bit of an error there from Todd Waters. It's going to give Daniel Reardon some impetus around the outside here, and Waters just spins up that back wheel a little bit too much, has to change his line through the whoops for a lap up, and that is all she wrote on that pass, and now he's going to have some company from Will Hahn here if he's not careful. I was about to say, Cam, sorry to interrupt, um, you, you talked about Will Hahn's physical fitness. He's hanging in there. He's doing a good job, yeah, so potentially I could be well wrong on Will Hahn. Now he gets to the inside of Todd Waters, and he's going to make a pest of himself in there. Good job there from Will Hahn. He's here to win races as well, and... I said, it's just been a really tough couple of years for Will Hart. I believe he's pretty good mates with Daniel Ricciardo. Those guys spend a bit of time hanging out. Will's brother Tommy is also a very, very solid full-time professional in the US. So the Hart brothers go back a long way with motocross racing in terms of their history, as does this man we're picking up vision of here, Daniel Reed, the number one red plate. I think this is a solid ride for Daniel Reed for someone who's only been back on the bike for only four weeks. Absolutely. Recovering from a very serious knee injury. And look at this now. Todd Waters coming back at him again. So this is a fantastic battle. Now we ride on board with Todd. Love this shot. That camera positioned just at the front of the bike. Nice and stable. And uh, if anything, we see there that Reardon has got away just slightly. Ooh. A couple of obstacles out there now. He's going to push him all the way to the end here, Todd Waters. This is, this is 
not a super technical supercross track and as I said Todd Ward has never really raced a full season of supercross as we pick up our top 10 update Brayton from Ferris the battle we're seeing here with Reardon Waters and Harm then Mosey Wilson Jay Wilson Jay Marmont and Antic Knapp rounding out the top 10 so Todd Waters will be very keen to establish himself as a supercross rider here in three years in Europe one of those years cruel by injury so the Europeans don't race a lot of supercross and Todd is definitely a noted motocross rider he got third overall I think this year in the, the outdoors so Todd looking to put some pressure and, and get some laps behind an experienced campaign like that when you say the outdoors for the uninitiated watching our program on Fox Sports you mean motocross traditional on the big up outdoor tracks tonight is an outdoor as well but clearly a uh, a more compact supercross layout and of course the supercross championship in 2016 combines outdoor and indoor tracks it does yeah look and the other major thing i guess the difference between well, what we refer to as the outdoors and the indoors is the fact that they'll race for 45 minutes plus a lap when they go racing outdoors the average track length around about two plus minutes where we're looking at a, a lap time here of around about 50 seconds so um, in terms of physicality that's more an endurance sport where this is much more a, a, a sprint type arrangement that these guys train their bodies for yeah more explosive as we see justin brayton gee dean ferris won't go away will he it's putting a lot of pressure on brayton here as well and looking to try and make a mistake if anything craig dak would be ecstatic with this ride by dean ferris and ferris will learn what from this ride wow there's jay marmont going down the lap taking back five years and i would have fallen over myself if i ever said that well he's eighth on the track at the moment that's it that that gives you a, an indication of the speed that Justin Brayton and Dean Ferris are carrying. Now, Justin Brayton's a top five guy in the AMA Supercross in the US. So you can get a look at this at Dean Ferris. I'm super impressed with this ride by Ferris to stick with the likes of Justin Brayton. Granted, Justin Brayton's changed brands in mid-season to come over here and do this, so there's a bit of work for him to do in terms of bike setup. But Dean Ferris, he's sticking at it here, and he is going to keep Justin Brayton honest all the way to the end. This is a great ride. Yeah, fantastic. Look at that comes up to him with a rush so less than five laps remaining now in the final of sx1 at this the opening round of the australian supercross championship for 2016. been a stellar night here staged by sb promotions at jim boomba more of the same in store at toowoomba on october 14. look at that ferris on triple one the cdr racing factory yamaha is giving the honda a little bit of grief now he is. He's all over the back of him, isn't he? He's looking very, very strong at this point in time, Dean Ferris. Justin Brayton, potentially he's managing this gap. Maybe he's waiting for this last three or four laps to throw down two or three quick laps and open up that gap. But this is where this race is going to be won and lost. Now they're looking to put a lap on Jay Wilson. He's a number six crank protein Honda machine, so he's gone down lap as well. So that's up to six that have lapped at this point in time, and that is a massive differential in lap speed for these guys. What Ferris needs here is a little bit of luck in traffic he needs Brayton to be held up when he's affecting a pass on a slower bike or something of that nature to give himself a chance. Because as we know, it's one thing catching Brayton, it's another entirely passing him. So he just needs a bit of luck, Ferris. What, what I would say to that as well, something that I'm really impressed with is the job that the flag is doing. The people holding the flag, generally they're volunteers, and getting that blue flag out so the lap riders can see the race leader coming and he's not being held up by any lap traffic. So in one way, it, it's probably a little bit tough for Dean Ferris, but another way, it's fantastic that Justin Brayton gets to ride the, the race that he wants to ride without any issues from the lap traffic. And the flaggies, as I said, they always do a great job, the marshals and our flaggies. And here we are again at Jim Boomer, we're doing another special job. Yeah, yeah, the backbone, aren't they? The unsung heroes of major, major events like this. Look at this now. Ferris has not given up the chase as they work their way to the chequered flag in this opening round. I guess they're only separated by what, three bike lengths, less than that on occasions, like right there, as they straighten up for the run down the centre over the start-finish jump. Nothing in this now. Interesting to note the line that Brayton's taking through that corner as well. There's a run opened up in that corner, and Brayton running a little bit more of a protective inside line to prevent the likes of Ferris from coming up the inside and making something happen there. So Justin Brayton is using all his experience and his guile and his wit in order to keep Ferris at bay. Now Ferris going for a bit of a look around the outside to try and make something happen on Brayton here. They'll get at this stall wall. Look at that, the ransom construction stall wall. Oh, not quite enough. Now Ferris looking to the inside again. Shows a wheel, does he? Well, we Brayton's riding there. What I'm super impressed with here, David, 
is how cool and calm and collected under pressure Justin Brayton is doing spectacular. Well, you'd, you'd expect that with his American experience. The runs he's got on the board in the sport at the highest level in AMA competition. And he was really good there, wasn't he? Half a lap ago, it looked like Ferris was going to challenge for the lead. He ran a little wide and Brayton stole the march. Yeah, that's all it takes, isn't it? Just that little bit of a bobble or a small mistake. And the likes of Justin Brayton have been doing it for that long. He doesn't make too many mistakes. When you race in the AMA, you might make a mistake and you'll shed five or six positions in a heartbeat where you know, Dean Ferris is learning a lesson there that Justin Brayton has pinned his ears back looking for something, maybe a sub 50 second lap or something like that in order to pull that gap. It looks to me like uh, that's getting to work now. Justin Brayton, the championship lap's coming up. Brayton in action. He'll see the last lap to go board. Next time, he passes the stripe. Left hand up, up the centre of the course. And the final lap board now is shown to the race leader, Justin Brayton, on the Honda. Getting the job done. Well, Ferris... He's too far back now. He's going to need a calamity. An error by Justin Brayton that would be, well, at best described as uncharacteristic. Yeah, he's a solid performer and has been for a long time, Justin Brayton. And you wouldn't expect too many bobbles or any mishaps to happen to Justin Brayton now. But great bike under him. You not expect anything to go wrong there. And he's just going to want to close this one out. Take a good haul of points into the, the next round here. Daniel Reed, and he's looking for a good all the points as well and sitting in third at this point in time as I round up Barry Sarowski and he want, we want him to do exactly the same thing and then get another four weeks under his belt before we go racing in Toowoomba. So the lead up heading for home now bike number 10 it's been a magnificent performance and here it is Justin Brayton wins the SX1 final the fireworks and the flares erupting what a great shot that is as the top group of riders make their way home. And you can see there the body language of Justin Brayton. He is delighted. So is Dean Ferris. As well he might be. That was a super ride by the Yamaha. He did a great job, didn't he, Dean Ferris? There it is, Justin Brayton gets a win ahead of Ferris. Reardon holds off Todd Waters by maybe half a second back to Will Hahn. So a good solid top five there, and there's some experienced motocross guys in that and Supercross. Absolutely. The recap now, and again we see Krusik. Wow. What's happened there is Barry Sarowski's clipped the gate and charged it, and as it's bounced back, it's hooked back up under, to John O'Krusik's wheel, and unfortunately for him, it sent him over the bars, and probably not the part of the highlights reel you want to see yourself on. So we see his legs go over. Good start here from Will Hahn, and watch for Ferris controlling the inside, and I think Ferris might get that knobby hole shot. It'll be interesting to see, but a good start for Ferris, and then Brayton, you can see he was hanging it out through there to try and get past Will Hahn and wanted to get his way to the front early, which he did. And the pass came here from Justin Brayton. Very, very clinical, very professional pass. Just ran it in and made it stick and then pinned his ears back for about half a lap. Then this battle which was going on between Dean Ferris and Daniel Reed. This was a fascinating battle. Throw Will Hahn into that one. And the pass by Todd Waters. Great drive from the group set, Todd Waters. A little bit loose out of there, but got the job done on Dean, Daniel Reed, I should say. And then that miscalculated time through the section. He's paid the price there, Todd Waters. What do you say, though, about Justin Brayton? What a great way to start the championship. Yep, perfect for him. Congratulations. A 25-point haul. Here's Jason Crump. Dan Ridden, third place in the main event there. You must have been pretty happy with that, all things considered. Yeah, I am. You know, it's it's hard. You set goals during the week and then you achieve them, but you're like, ah, if only, you know. Um, you know, we worked so hard to be ready for this round and, you know, we said at the early in the stages that we'd be ready to win. Um, but tonight was just about the race coming to me and uh, four weeks just wasn't enough really to be on the bike. Uh, my fitness was down a little bit. My technique's fine. My technique and my speed, you know, we see this in qualifying. It's just I need to be able to string, uh, you know, a good handful, good 20 laps together. and. I did tonight, but my pace dropped off a little bit. But like I said, we're okay with that. We knew that was probably going to be the outcome, and you know we're riding against some top guys. Second place in the main event for Dean Ferris. Dean, you made the start, looked like you were away. Um, Justin just managed to get past you, but there towards the end of the race, you um, picked right back up onto him again. Little moment over the back there probably cost you a chance for the win. Yeah, with two laps to go, I was lining up for a pass, um, but then I made a big mistake, and uh, you know what? I was like, I'll just finish in second. Um, I couldn't believe I rode so good tonight, really stoked. Yeah, with my start, there's, uh, I think I've, I've got two hole shots tonight, and that's probably more than I got in the whole of motocross, so 
really stoked I've nailed them in the last week. It's made a big help tonight. And, uh, yeah, I think I, I learned a lot tonight. I think I learned, learned more just following Justin tonight than I would have if I was leading the whole time with the pressure. Um, so stoked. Uh, I didn't expect this. I, you know, consider myself a better motocross rider, but tonight I rode really well, so I'm really happy. Winner of the main event, Justin Brayton. Our Aussie boy, Dean Ferris, yeah, yeah. made you work for it in the first few laps, but after that you were managed to uh, put a little bit of a gap into him and I think managed your pace pretty well throughout the rest of the race. Yeah, I, I thought I got out of the gate pretty good and just kind of got pinched. And so I think I was on fourth or fifth, and I knew that with this track, once everyone, when everyone's bunched up like that, I had to make passes quick. So I got to the lead fairly fast, uh, maybe lap three or four, and, um, and put in some solid laps, but... Uh, you know, made my fair mistakes, and, and Ferris was very impressive. He rode great, rode uh, really, really good. And uh, but the last three or four or five laps, I had a, enough of cushion where I could just kind of relax a little bit and, and uh, just hit my line. So, so thankful to uh, get this first one out of the way. Uh, it's like my fifth day on the Honda, so um, that just shows how, how good the bike is. And excited to come back with my family. Uh, been here for a couple weeks now, so I miss them like crazy. Gonna head back to the states tomorrow and then uh, get back to work. So excited to be here in Australia. I love I love everything about Australia, so um, I wouldn't even mind living here at some point. Yamaha team manager Craig Dack couldn't have really got a much better start to the end of the Supercross series with a second and a third. Well, as you know, mate, you know, there's an old saying, you can, you can certainly, you can't win the championship at the first round, but you can certainly lose it. So to have both guys on the podium, particularly Dean Ferris, he's really designated our motocross guy. He's just come off the championship a couple of weeks ago, winning the motocross championship and we didn't really expect that sort of result from him but we'll take it and uh, Tan Reardon of course he's had that knee reconstruction only several weeks ago so to see him get third and off to a solid start we're very very happy. Yeah Craig Dack would be happy no doubt about it the championship points see Brayton leading by three points over Dean Ferris then Daniel Reardon, Waters Hahn, Mosig Wilson, Marmont Wilson and Enstick Knapp rounding out the top ten. The remainder you can see. It's been a highly entertaining event here. And a reminder, the remaining rounds on the 2016 Australian Supercross Championship calendar see the next round at Toowoomba Showground on October 14. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my co-commentator, Cam Williams. Great job. Terrific to have your expert insight into proceedings. Thank you so much for having us. Some great racing here in Jaboom. I'm really looking forward to round number two. Yep, you'll be back for our coverage on Fox Sports of the second round from uh, Toowoomba Showground. All three very happy riders, Brayton, Ferris and Reardon, running first, second and third respectively here tonight at the Jim Boomba Stadium. Do hope you've enjoyed our coverage on Fox Sports. Thanks for being with us. We will catch you next time.